No, Steve. I said hire me a vehicle, like for like. What is this piece of shit? Can't even put the flag up, man. It's that small. I got the rolling on my arm and I'm phone Sean Dawn and I've got the cereal bars because I've got it going on. How are you doing, everybody? I am Kev Ashford and you, my friends, are very welcome to this week's edition of The Man United Van Cam. Hope everybody is all right. Loads to get through this week. Last week, we were beaten by Crystal Palace. I will be having a short rant about that. Uh, loads of news flying about this week. Alexis Sanchez finally leaves Manchester United. So we'll be discussing that. Is Sanchez Manchester United's worst ever signing? We will delve into that in a bit. Don't know what that is. Uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic has also said to United basically come and get me if you need me I'm here so we'll be looking at that would you have uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic back at Manchester United I'm struggling here man it's early Friday morning we will also be doing the usual shit so that means you're going to get a dose of Cockstroker of the week we'll have a big Van Cam debate and if I can somehow manage to fit in your comments I will do that so first of all, I want to comment on that crock of horse shit that was Manchester United 1, Crystal Palace 2. Certainly did not see that one coming, I don't think anyone did. I mean, everybody that was in the comment section last week, 2-0, 3-0, 4-0, you know, everybody was confident and we went into it. Loads of possession. I mean, we're going back to Van Hal days here, you know, as long as you keep the ball, they can't hurt you. Well, they can because he proved it, man. If they break away like that and score, you're absolutely daffy ducked and that's what happened to Manchester United that day but you know we leave these games with so many more questions you know we don't get any answers I mean David De Gea is at fault for the winner uh, Jesse Lingard what does this dickhead bring to the party I'm not a big fan of Jesse Lingard a lot of people that Jesse Lingard's got a lot of fans be a lot of Jesse Lingard fans Kev leave him alone He's a youngster. Oh, is he? He's only 16. Is he only 17? No, he's 26, man. He's nearly turning 27. He's a closer side of 30. Oh, and everybody just backs him up by saying he's a young lad. Give him time. He does not deserve to be in this Man United team. He should be in there on merit and performance. And he's just not bringing anything to the party. Rashford, you know, is in and out of games at the minute. And why is he taking free kicks? Do you know what I mean? We're going to have to start issuing warnings to the people, the United fans that sit on Rose Ed of the scoreboard end and the Stretford end. You know, because when Rashford takes these free kicks, they're getting pinged there. Do you know what I mean? There could be kids there. We've got health and safety here, man. The ball's going to hit them on the head or in the face or something. It's just absolutely no logic to Marcus Rashford taking free kicks for Man United. I don't understand why they persist with letting him do that. But yeah, the result as a whole was a shocker. Couldn't actually see it coming. I mean, when Dan James got the equaliser in the 88th minute, I'm thinking, if there's one team that's going to win this, it's Man United. We're going to proper go for this now. We're talking Fergie time. And it just never happened, man. And we got caught on the break, sucker punch, and it just sucked the absolute life out of us. But that's all I'm going to say on that matter, because that game... It's dead to me now. Do you know what I mean? I got it out of my system. I had a right good drink after it. Still hung over from it now, man. That's... Anyway, anyway. Right. Uh, a few other things to talk about. Uh, man United making the news this week. AS Roma have taken Chris, or Mike, uh, Smalling on loan. <laughs> and even paid a couple of million for the privilege of it. Oh, Ed Woodward, what a man. How do you even construct a deal like that? Who would take Chris Smalling on loan? I tell you who, AS Roma, because yes, they have agreed a deal to take the former England gobshite on loan. I just didn't see that one coming. I mean, for me, the Chuckle Brothers have been broken up and it is quite sad in that way because 
you know, I want Jones to go as well, but United offered him a new contract and that. They obviously see him, you know, he's got no potential, no talent, but he's English and they probably think we can get a bit of a feedback, you know, a feedback for him. But Smalling, oh, do you, what, what I do is, I know I'm making a bit of a joke of this, but I've made a little montage and I think it's only right. I mean, Smalling's been there, he's been there in the Fergie days. You know, Ferguson signed him. He's come through the ranks of lower league football to Manchester United. So I think it's only fair that we be serious for a moment here. We need to look back at Chris Smalling. Let's forget this sh the fuckery. Let's have a look at a little montage I've made of Chris Smalling. Basically, I just want to say thanks, Chris. Thank you, Chris Smalling. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, there's Chris Smalling's best bits, or probably the worst bits. Oh, well, they are the worst bits anyway. My personal favourite is the first one where he sort of goes to head the ball back to the keeper and drops the worm on the floor. Oh, yeah. Chris, the gangster, Smalling. Uh, nice one. Thanks very much. Uh, have a great time in Italy marking Cristiano Ronaldo. Alexis Sanchez has finally left Manchester United on loan to Inter Milan. I will be getting your thoughts on this in a bit and I'll be giving you my thoughts on it in the big Van Cam debate where I will be asking the question, is Alexis Sanchez Manchester United's worst ever signing when you take everything into consideration? But yeah, he's gone. The best thing he ever did was play Glory Glory Man United on a piano and it's debatable whether he even did, you know, with editing and all the shit that you can do these days days so yeah he probably didn't even do that the useless tit uh, other news Zlatan Ibrahimovic issues a come get me play yeah a bit of clickbait here but no he has actually said if you need me I'm here come and get me so uh, I'm gonna throw this one out as well uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic would you have him at Manchester United the return could be in January and in a position where we are very very lightweight if well, as proved, Martial's been injured against Crystal Palace last week. It leaves us lightweight up front big time. And it's the thing, the mind boggles, man. How are Man United working at the minute? We sell Lukaku for 70-odd million. We do not replace him. Not even a backup player in the squad. You know, it's obvious that we need a creative midfielder. Bruno, 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 bro, what the fuck is wrong with me, man? Bruno, right composure. Bruno Fernandes was said to be on United's hit list and United were looking at him in the summer. Why was a bid never made, man? That's exactly what we need in that midfield. We lost Fellaini and yes, I took the piss out of him, but at least he was a very, very expensive plan B, wasn't he? And at that game against Crystal Palace, it did cross my mind. I thought, do you know what? If we had the bush here now for the last 10 minutes, we just throw him on, get them elbows rocking, backing into defenders, just cause all kinds of miver. And, you know, we lose Herrera on a free transfer. We haven't replaced a midfield player in that area. So how can Man United be stronger this season going forward as an attacking force? So many questions. You give me the answers because I'm searching for them. Right, that's the start of the show, done and dusted. Apologies again for the setup, but we're just going to have to deal with it and work through it this week. I don't know when I'm getting the other vehicle back. I'm very distressed about it. But we are going to go straight into the big Van Cam debate. I did mention earlier we're going to do it on Alexis Sanchez. So with that in mind, is Alexis Sanchez Manchester United's worst ever signing? We get into it now in a thing we call the big Van Cam debate. This is now John Vallandigham's moment. He's got a Van Cam t-shirt on and I roar, the big Van Cam debate. Let's spin this shit. The big Van Cam debate. Who needs a green screen? Okay, so this, let's come down. 
This is the big van cam debate. Now, last week we did it on Lukaku. Basically, Lukaku was talking all kinds of horse shit and saying he was made a scapegoat along with Sanchez and Pogba at Man United for United's bad season. And I threw the question out and said, what the fuck off? Was Lukaku made a scapegoat at Manchester United? It was straight to the point. It was a simple yes or a no. Uh, 97 I think it was 98% said no. No chance, Lukaku. Stop talking shit, man. You were not made a scapegoat. You, you know, you made yourself just look like a dickhead by having a really shit first touch. And yes, you scored a lot of goals, but you didn't do it in the big games. That's what people were saying in the comments section, which really does lead me to think, who are these other 2% that actually, well, probably maybe Lukaku watched it, maybe Sanchez watched it, that could explain it. If not, and if you actually think that Lukaku was made a scapegoat, then I want to know what kind of shit you're drinking, because I need a couple of litres for that for this weekend. Kev's going to go proper chicken oriental. Anyway, this week, and like I did say earlier, we are talking Alexis Sanchez. I want to know, do you think Alexis Sanchez is Manchester United's worst ever signing? And I know a few people are going to jump in here, you know, Roy Keane, Alfie Ingerhalen, two-footed on me, but I'm backing away and I'm saying, whoa, just hear me out for one second. I know you're going to throw in the big names, but I want you to think, money-wise, yes, it was a £20 million fee, but this mofo has been picking up Here's the phone, I'll continue this in a minute. Back in play. So, Alexis Sanchez, is he the worst ever Manchester United signing? And like I was just saying before, there will be people saying, Kev, you know, Juan Sebastian Varon, there's going to be uh, Bebe, Cleberson, players like that. But what you need to take into consideration is United paid a £20 million fee. They've been reportedly paying him nearly half a million pounds a week. So when you structure the deal in your head and you think about it and weigh all that up, take it into consideration the fact that he scored, what, about four goals in 45 games for Man United and all the hype that surrounded the transfer, the fact that when he was at Arsenal, he was absolutely sensational. He was all over the place he was tenacious he was the arguably the best player in the Premier League when Man United signed him and now he's gone to Inter Milan on loan you know he's away from Manchester United do you look back now and think yes Kev Alexis Sanchez was the worst or up to date the worst ever Man United signing it's a simple yes or a no. Get voting on this, get commenting. Maybe you think that somebody else is a worse signing, but you know, at this moment in time, when you break down all the fees, the wages, uh, the hype surrounding him when he comes to United, I'm struggling, I'm struggling big time here. I'm struggling to think of anybody else. So let me know exactly what you think. Make sure you get voting. There's an eye up here, click on that. It's a simple yes or a no. There he is now sitting up on that fence no bed do you know the what the, the wise chinese man once sat up on the fence because he couldn't make a decision somebody come past who does that clay pigeon stuff <sighs> straight in his head never recovered was never the same man after that so you just bear that in mind and make a decision do not sit on the fence thank you the big van cam debate I give up! That was the big Van Cam debate. Make sure you get involved in that and cast your vote. Next, we're going to do a thing that we all know as Cockstroker of the Week. I've compiled uh, a few nominations this week, so let's roll straight into this and find out who's taken home this week's award. The Cockstroker of the Week. Here we go with Cockstroker of the Week. This week I have compiled the top four. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Coming in at number four, now this is a bug bearer of mine. It is basically your football team's social media department. It's basically these 17 year old spotty kids. That's what I think they are that run them because they're absolute shite that they come out with. You know, they're in the office, they're off the tits on Harry Bow and all that, fizzy drinks, lilt, the totally tropical days. Anyway, that doesn't matter, right? Because what happens is you get these football clubs, the social media departments trying to banter and I 
hate that word, banter each other. This is what football has become. Social media, football, what's it all about, man? So number four this week is going to Crystal Palace and their social media department, who after the match, and yes, great victory, first time they've ever won at Old Trafford and all that bollocks, decided to take a swipe at Ashley Young. Now they posted a video of Wilfred Zaha basically turning Ashley Young inside out. But at the end of it, Ashley Young did actually make a block, but they put Wilf had him dancing, which a few people found disrespectful. They said, Ashley Young, you know, he's, uh, you basically just disrespect him, you know, showing no respect and that. I'm, I haven't got a problem with that. It's more about the shit, the social media posts. You know, you just won at Old Trafford 2-1 historic result. Why pick out that? Why even pick on Ashley Young? But again, I'm not defending him. But to uh, Andros Townsend, fair play to him. Andros Townsend actually come out and said a 34-year-old ex-winger versus one of the league's best wingers. He gets destroyed t twice, yet he still manages to make them block the cross. We should be applauding this, not making fun of it. Respect. So respect to Andros Townsend there for picking it up. But I'd more be picking up on Crystal Palace, the social media aspect, the department of it, and saying... Hey, listen here, we've just won. Why are you picking out this kind of shit? So for that reason, they're number four. And just to prove that I don't wear red tinted specs, I never have actually, but Manchester United's social media department, who on the day of the match before Crystal Palace decided to tweet out, oh, it's a sunny afternoon at Old Trafford, talk to us Reds, how are you feeling? Yeah, I was to talk to you for what? Just write a tweet to you? No, I'm not doing it. But it wasn't for that because they then followed it up with a tweet underneath, said, wish we were playing Chelsea again though. I mean, is this United's best attempt at banter? Why are they bringing Chelsea into it? We're not playing Chelsea. And I tell you one thing that I actually thought about, I wish we were playing Chelsea again. This proves that children are running United's social media account. Wish we were playing Chelsea again. If we played Chelsea again, we'd get beat. Anybody that watched that Chelsea game knows that they could have been 2-0 up at half-time, even 3-0 at the bar, the post. You know, for large parts of that game, Chelsea were very good. So for us to actually play them again, they'd probably beat us. So do you know what I mean? Wish we were playing Chelsea again, though. Don't bring them into it. And then we get beat by Crystal Palace. So you shower dickheads in the social media department. I hope you're proud of yourself. I bet you went straight back and hid under your rock after that. Dickheads. Number two, and this has been a really close one for the top spot this week, but hear me out. Number two, if you're on Twitter, you'll be familiar with an absolute dick who's called Mike L-U-H-G-S-Z-N. Uh, an absolute dick spouts an absolute pile of fucking horseshite and this week was no different following the defeat to Crystal Palace this is what this bellend tweeted people won't like this but fuck it it never stopped me before 15 games after Munich 3 wins, 3 draws, 9 losses Ollie's last 15 3 wins, 3 draws, 9 losses this man is literally as bad for a football club as half of your team dying. Hope this helps. How the fuck would that help? And what, how do you even get into your thick fucking head that you would mention the Munich air disaster with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's last 15 games in charge at Manchester United? That is just pure coincidence. The man is literally as bad for a football club as half of your team dying. Down with that kind of shit. I'm, I, do you know what? I'm fucking fuming about this. And a lot of people are. I know he's had death threats. Okay, so number one this week goes to the man who I believe is basically pivotal and the main reason that Berry went out of the Football League this week. It was absolutely heartbreaking to hear all the stories of fans. I, mean, I think you have to look at it and think, if this happened to your... You can't imagine it until, you know, if Man United basically all of a sudden you know went out of the Premier League and we never seen him again you just don't know the knock-on effect I mean this is your Saturday your Sunday every single week you know you build up to the game you talk about it and that to have it taken away from you I can't even imagine how these Berry fans must be feeling but Steve Dale absolute disgrace he for me is the man that took this team 
you know, he, he, he basically just wiped them out. He's mismanaged them. He should never have been able to take control of the club. Absolute dickhead. 134 years of history. They won the FA Cup twice. You know, they, they, they're a team that are not too far, really, from Old Trafford and Manchester United. A lot of Man United players have got links with Berry in that. So it's heartbreaking in that sense. But uh, an actual interview with Steve Dale... Uh, actually, well, basically surfaced on the internet, went viral. I think you just need to listen to what the man actually says. I mean, he even mentions that, you know, he, he didn't know Berry had a football team. He's not that bothered about going to Berry. You know, he didn't even know where it was and stuff. It's just absolutely an absolute disgrace. And for that reason, I'm going to play the clip now, but Steve Dale, you are and fully deserve Cockstroker of the Week for this week. Yeah, I think it's fantastic that they are that passionate. But what they need to do is temper it and not be silly and not show themselves up by disgraceful behaviour when they're full of beer and discredit the club. I never went to Bury. I, I, it's not a place I frequented. So, you know, for me to walk away from Bury and never go back is is a very easy thing to do because I don't do anything up there. I'm not... I wouldn't. I didn't even know there was a football team called Berry. To be honest with you, I'm, I'm not a football fan. Cockstroker of the week. There we go with Cockstroker of the week for another week. Right, let's have a look at the Van Camp Fantasy Football League. Let's see who's rocking that top spot. Okay, so the Van Camp Fantasy Football League is in full flow and Kev is doing absolute dog shit. But less of that anyway, let's look who's at the top of the league. It's a right close one at the minute. Keeley's Wheelies has gone into second place. That was last week's leader. Chanda Chima FC takes the top spot, but there's only one point in it. Uh, this has really put me, give me the boot up the arse that I needed. In proper David Moyes style, I am panic buying. And no, I've not brought Marouane Fellaini in because that makes no sense at all. What I've done, i played my wild card. I'm just fed up, man, because I'm going to get left proper behind. If you look at me, Man United, Van Camp FC, I'm 44th. It's absolute disgraceful, man. I keep walking to the shops down the street. There's kids laughing at me and stuff, throwing stones at me. I'm like, back off! You know what I mean? I said the other week, it's a marathon, it is not a sprint. But yeah, I'm in 44th and it's just not good enough. So there you go. Kev's played the wild card and we will have more of a Van Camp Premier League Fantasy Football League Van yeah, yeah, well, uh, yeah, update next week. Here we go with a quick, quick look at your comments. Uh, last week, Super Chat Appreciation Society, I want to say a massive thanks, as always it seems to be at the minute, to Dan Wills, and a huge thanks to David Conreen, who is the Withenshaw Raver. Thanks very much, mate. You do not need to do that, but it is much appreciated. And what I will say is, looking through your Twitter timeline, I only noticed the other week how much you're actually promoting Van Camp. So that is a massive help to Kev and his quest to get to 3,000 subscribers. Don't be laughing, all these big accounts watching. It will be a big deal, and I will get there. I would one of these days anyway. The next one I wanted to look at, these are your comments, a selection of comments that I've gone through, is an Arsenal fan, the Arsenal Realist on YouTube, who said, thank fuck I came across you, mate. Now, at the start, I'm thinking, bloody hell, who is this, you know, person do from years ago or whatever, I don't know, it sound right. But then he said, I am so done with Terry Fleur's cocaine nonsense. What's all that about? Mark Goldbridge, whippersnapper, FLD, boring as fuck, all them channels. Well, they're just shit, basically, but you, my son, a breath of fresh fucking Mancunian polluted air. Amen. Thanks very much for having a look at the channel, mate. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, like I always say, there's fans of all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, football clubs that watch Vanka. Oh, do you know what? I give up. Jarvis Cocker. The Jarvis Cocker was in the comment section. I don't think that is him. But he says, great show, Kev. Keep up the great work. Big hug. Would you know what, big man? Bring it on in. Come on. Let's hug. Vanka regular Robert Ingram was in the comments section and said, the world might be in turmoil, 
wars, murders, destruction and icebergs melting. But in the end, we got the van cam. I think that is pretty much my new YouTube description for my channel, Boxed Off. That's more like it. Back in the saddle, it's Friday. I've had shit news last week when Man United got beat 2-1. You know, followed up by the breakdown of the wagon. But two negatives have been cancelled out by two positives. That's Chris Smalling going to Roma. And now the wagon is back. So we're back at stage one. I'm just neutral. Anyway, Simon the Bomb on his own YouTube channel uploaded this video and said, uh, this is basically who I look like. Do you agree? This is... <clears throat> Wanker! The week. And then on the Twitter, Jason D'Souza. What a name. What a name. Got in touch and said, congrats at Kevin Ashford 7 on 20,000 subs. First I ever. Hashtag Van Cam. And then, oh, there's some kind of picture of some, some pedo. Could be Rolf Harris eh? or the Colonel from KFC. Joking, it's not funny. Man, try to hit 3,000 subscribers, and this guy's trying to say that that's what I'll look like by the time that I hit 20,000 subscribers. You cheeky twisted, but he's probably correct, he's probably absolutely bang on. So, uh, I can't really hold too much against you. You are absolutely bang on, right? It's been an emotional one, so much happening this week. The wagon thought was dead and then it's back from the dead it's great stuff man i'm back in the usual setup what a way to end the show this week we play southampton away it's going to be a tricky tie this but for christ's sake man we need to get back in to winning ways winning ways yeah whatever listen if you've been watching live on the old uh, premiere thing and you've been in the chat room fair play to you always enjoy interacting with everyone and all that no not that way on the computer you know what i mean so nice one stay safe enjoy the match uh, loads going on at man united at the minute make sure you get in the poll like the bastard video uh hit the bell end or whatever i don't know just notifications or something you get informed listen i'm very hot i need to do one you have a top weekend drink in moderation be nice to people and work hard yeah and basically be yourself because the world worships the original yeah they'll put that under me one day and say kevin ashford see you later man this is <clears throat> wanker of the week Nice one for watching the video. And thanks to everybody who has subscribed to Van Cam. You can follow me on all the usual social media platforms. That's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Plenty of Fish. So make sure you give me a follow. Nice one if you dropped a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe. This is Van Cam. Nice one.